Mr. Fitness 2.0. Yay! United States Navy. We're back. Video one of 2015, I guess. Anyway, so I couldn't think of a better way to start it than, first of all, a shout out. Time out. Okay, uh, real quick. My boy, my, my main man back in Texas, Sugarland, Texas, Mr. Anthony Munoz, you know who you are, best buddy. Anyway, he started his own gym, guys. Real quick shout out, IPF, I, Ideal Physique Fitness. He hooked me up with a bunch of t-shirts. Check him out. I think he's in the Sugarland, uh, uh, Missouri City area. Um, great guy, personal trainer, macros, training, nutrition, get you from shit to fit. He can do it. Contact him. Anthony Munoz, Sugarland, Texas, Ideal Physique Fitness. All right, we got that out of the way. Boom. All right, so since I haven't done a video in like a year and nobody actually sent me a question, so these are good questions that uh, I felt need addressing. Um, so without further ado, it's Saturday, so we'll call it the Saturday Q&A. One training question, one nutrition question, and we're gonna keep going with these fun facts. I like looking these up and they teach me something and hopefully teach you something too. So random fun fact as well. So, without any further ado, here we go. Training question. This is actually legit. Uh, a buddy of mine I work out with, uh, who's on the, who I work with on the ship, um, he always has trouble with his back. He has trouble actually, when we're in the gym, we're training, he has trouble feeling, feeling the back movement. Feeling the muscles in his back activate as we're actually doing stuff. Um, and that's actually something I can relate to. I remember when I first started, um, I'm, I'm old as shit now, but when I was like 18 um, and I first started getting into training, I could never really, I mean, I, I could do my back movements, but I never really felt it. I really had trouble uh, making that, that mind to muscle connection on back movements, whatever it was, whether it was a pull up or a pull down or a row or you know anything like that, I, I, could, I would have trouble feeling it. I would, have, I would always feel it more in my shoulders or in my biceps. But I've never really I had trouble always feeling it in my back, and that's something that definitely comes with time. But anyway, the, the the best way, or one of the best ways, that in my personal opinion, to feel or activate a muscle more effectively with back training is using a principle called pre-exhaust. This was something that um, Mr. Joe Weider, who basically was considered a, a pioneer of bodybuilding back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, helped Arnold, helped Arnold with a lot of his stuff um, back in the day. He can't. He had this principle called pre-exhaust, and what it is is you're actually uh, pre-exhausting a muscle group, so you're using an isolation exercise preceding your compound movement. So in this example for back, if you have, if I have trouble, if I have trouble, or someone I'm working with, or whoever it is has trouble, uh, let's say they have trouble feeling their back um, during you know whatever it is. So you would do an isolation exercise prior to your main compound lift for that muscle group. So in the case of back, I would start off with something, maybe some sort of machine movement, uh, maybe a straight arm cable pull down here to pre-activate the lats, something where they don't have to use too many muscle groups um, to get that muscle to fire. Now we hit that first. Then after we've hit, say, maybe two to three sets of that of said isolation exercise, whatever that might be, um, then we would move to the compound exercise. So let's say we did two by 12 to 15 of a straight arm cable pull down here, pre-exhausting the lats, then we would move to a pull up or a pull down, which would enable them to, after this has already been pre-exhausted, bang, really feel the lats, the traps, the rhomboids, everything in between once we move to that compound exercise. So pre-exhaust training principle can be used basically for any muscle group. For back, it comes in especially helpful. Um, also, it can be used, I like to use it for, for uh, quads. When I first started squatting, my body is very, very uh, like hip dominant and glute dominant. So when I first started barbell squatting, I could never really feel the movement in my quads where I needed, where I needed the growth. Um, so I would, you know, I pre-exhaust by doing a leg extension uh, prior to squats. Now it's going to affect your poundage. If you're if you're going for powerlifting and raw strength and poundage, um, it's not necessarily something you might want to use. If you're going more for aesthetics, bodybuilding, physique, uh, definitely, you know, using that pre-exhaust method is a way to to do that because uh, once you do that, you're not going to be able to use quite as much weight on your compound movement because you pre-exhausted the muscle group. 
but it definitely makes a difference uh, when you're talking about bodybuilding and physique aesthetics. So don't want to go on too long, but that's a training question. Boom, moving right along, nutrition question. Alcohol, can it be a part of a nutrition program? All right, kids, let's get right to this. I don't condone drinking. Mr. Fitness, he goes out on the weekend and has a two or three drinks, and I usually call it quits at that because responsible drinking can be part of a fitness program, actually, absolutely. Going out and getting blitzed every weekend, no, I wouldn't call that part of a fitness and nutrition program. So, alcohol, can it be incorporated? Yes. In short, I'm already going about five and a half minutes, I'm trying to keep this going. Um, yes, how is it so? Alcohol is a macronutrient, just like protein, just like carbs, just like fat. Alcohol has seven calories per gram, macronutrient wise. Um, any beer, beer, depending on what kind it is, between 10 and 14 calories an ounce. Uh, any shot, depending on what kind, what kind it is, can have between 80 and 120 calories per shot. Um, how do we calculate this? If you want to responsibly incorporate it in, into a nutrition program, um, I actually would recommend you tracking it as carbs. So you have a beer, a 100 calorie beer. Um, that would equate to the same amount of calories as roughly about 25 grams of carbs. So for every 100 calorie beer that you drink, you macronutrient, you know, calculate 25 grams of carbs. I'm not a biophysicist, but somewhere down the line, uh, those, uh, those calories they, uh, from alcohol, they actually get metabolized in the form of sugar. They get to convert to a form of sugar called acetate in the liver or something like that. Um, don't quote me, but that's basically... Um, as long as the calories are accounted for, guys, it's always calories in, calories out. Uh, but the best way to do that in my IMHO, in my humble opinion, is calculate the uh, calories that you consume from alcohol as carbohydrates. So I could pre, in my, my fitness pal, I could put in, okay, I'm going to go out and have three beers tonight, uh, and that's going to equate to 75 grams of carbs. I'm going to go ahead and calculate that as 75 grams of carbs added to my fitness pal if I'm going to hit my macros for the day and I want to do it with alcohol. So it can be just like that. Really, it's that simple. Uh, carbs, calories from alcohol, calculated as carbs. You could calculate it as fat if you wanted to, but um, that's how I do it, and that seems to work. So for all you uh, kids out there that are of age and you want to do that, that's how you do it. Okay, fun fact. Try not to go too long. This credit goes to SoTrueFacts.com. Kind of goes with our alcohol nutrition question. Here we go. In the Middle Ages, beer was consumed more than water, as consuming alcohol was safer than drinking polluted water. You history buffs out there, the Middle Ages was in Europe, 5th to 15th century. There you have it. They drank more beer than water because it was safer. Take that for what you will. I don't really know that it applies now, but take it for what you will, kids. Okay. That's it. Uh, this has been a good training nutrition Q&A with Mr. Fret. That's 2 point United States Navy. Send all your questions. Eric.Downing28, gmail.com, facebook.com slash Eric S. Downing. Stay tuned. New stuff coming, like I said before. Don't forget, keep training, keep eating well, keep those six-minute abs.